We should be live. We are live. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone out there in Facebook land. Thanks for joining us today. We have an uh, awesome guest. I'm super excited to have her today. But before we get to her, let me introduce my co-host, Lee and Julie. How are you ladies doing today? Hi, Chief. Hi, Chief. Doing great. It's good to see you again. Good to see you too, Leah. You're looking great today. Well, I love thank you. And thank I love you. the lip gloss too. Oh, oh my please. gosh. We need to talk more often. Wow. Lots of compliments flying today. Mm. We <laughs> you look good day, too, girl. Chief. Every you day. look good too. Yeah, Chief, you do. Your teeth look really white today. Oh, thank, thanks. You look good. Oh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. You just boosted my ego. <laughs> Only thank today. So Only today. <laughs> thank you so much. Hey, Julie, you mind? Let's just get, let's get this going. You mind introducing our guest? We, Chief, I am thrilled to introduce today's guest. She is a true hero. She's a wounded warrior and a Purple Heart recipient, the first woman to lose a limb in combat. She's also an elite athlete. In 2008, she became the first Iraq War veteran to represent the United States in the Paralympics. In 2016, she competed at the Rio Paralympics, taking the bronze in the triathlon's debut at the Games. She has truly triumphed over tragedy it is an honor to welcome Melissa Stockwell today. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me on. Happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you. It's such an honor to have you on, Melissa. And for everybody watching, thank you for joining us. Um, we know you want to share some love and some questions with Melissa. So we'll be reading those out loud throughout the broadcast. Go ahead and drop those in the comments. And if you enjoy these chief chats, uh, be sure to follow us so you can know who's coming up next. We have guests lined up for weeks, every Tuesday and Thursday. And if you want to enjoy this with your friends, now is a good time to start your watch party. So let's get this going. Melissa, thank you for your service and your sacrifice. It's an honor to have you with us today. This means so much to the warfighters and military families joining us virtually. To start, can you tell us about your service in the Army and what led you to wanting to serve our nation? Absolutely. First off, thank you for um, your service as well. And to all of you listeners out there, I mean, thank you. If you're serving, if you're a family member, um, we're all in it together. So thank all of you for, for the service. So, um, so yeah, I, I pretty short and quick answer. I, I joined the military because I love our country. That flag you see behind me, I learned at a young age how lucky we were to live in the country that we do kind of love the red the white and the blue and what it stood for and wanted to wear that uniform with that flag patch on my shoulder so made that a reality when i did um, um rotc at the university of colorado in boulder was commissioned as a second lieutenant in um 2003 and then in 2004 i was deployed over to iraq um, with the first cavalry division Awesome. And now you um, are an athlete and you're, you've been training for the 2020 Paralympics and those have been postponed. So can you share a little bit more about how COVID-19 has affected you, Melissa? Yeah. So, so yes, you are correct. So I am, so after I lost my leg, so um, I lost my leg on just a, it was a routine convoy through central Baghdad. And um, soon after we had arrived in Iraq, so April 13th of 2004, and um, after my recovery, really decided I wanted to get my life back. And I did that by choosing um, to be in the, in the field of athletics, so through, through sport. So I, I have competed in two, Olymp two Paralympic Games and was hoping for the third one in Tokyo 2020, which is now Tokyo 2021. So mm -hmm. I think like everybody out there, um, you know, this pandemic has impacted all, all of our lives. And you know, it seems a little bit trivial to, you know, talk about how it's impacted my life as an athlete because it has impacted the world in so many other ways. But the goal still is to be competing over in Tokyo in 2021. Um, I am still training daily for that. I'm in triathlon, so swimming, biking, and running with hopes of um, being over in Tokyo next year. Wow. So you touched on this a little bit, but have sports always been a part of your life? What led you to become a swimmer and a triathlete? 
So I grew up um, a, a gymnast. I you know I think everyone when they're younger has their sport and I was no different. So gymnastics was my sport when I was younger and dreamt of being an, an Olympian, you know, I think as any young gymnast does. And after I lost my leg, I learned about the Paralympics and how it was for those with physical disabilities. And it was kind of like I had a second chance of competing on the world's biggest athletic stage representing a country I defended over in Iraq. So kind of that, that dream was born um, pretty quickly to want to be a Paralympian. Hey, Melissa, you're getting fantastic uh, feedback on Facebook. I'm scrolling through uh, uh, right now. I believe Blake Richardson says morning from KC. Uh, a couple of other people, where are they from? Fort Lennonwood, Missouri. Evelyn saying is, is tuning in. Rulon Walker saying good morning. Blake Richardson says he was an MP in Iraq the same year. Okay. Much love, much love. Um, met her at the Express Conference a few years ago, Ryan Gosa says. So um, lots of uh, lots of love coming in. Awesome. So, well, with, thanks, girl. <laughs> so with that, right, at the exchange, we are focused on keeping warfighters ready and resilient, right? Staying fit to fight. Physical fitness plays a huge role. How do you stay fit even when you aren't training? So if you're right, physical fitness, I think not only for your, for the body and how, and how it kind of makes you feel physically, but I mean, the mental part of it too, it's, um, I, I mean, sports for me has given me, you know, more self-worth, more self-confidence. It's given me things to do with my children. Um, and I don't think we can stress enough about physical fitness, not just the physical part of it, but helping you have a, a, a clear mind. I mean, it, it, you don't have to go out and run, you know, 20 miles every day to be physically fit. You can just you can get out and go for a walk around the block with your kids. You can get out on your bike and go, you know, ride your bike for 20 minutes, play basketball in the driveway, wh whatever it may be. I just think it, it, it helps personally it helps clear my mind, kind of get things ready. It kind of gives you a break from everything else going on in the day. Um, I mean, physical fitness is, is huge. It's um, everyone, everyone should have some sort of physical fitness in their life. So in your day to day routine, what do you do to work out? So because I, so I, you know, athletics is kind of my, um, it, it's, it's my outlet. It's what I'm doing right now. It's, um, I, I am actively training in hopes of making the Paralympics next year. So, you know, my, my training is, I'm not saying it's what everybody should do. I, I do train a, a lot. Um, so it kind of depends on the day. I probably train between 15 and 18 hours a week. Um, you know, yesterday I had a two hour bike ride and a half hour run. Today I'll probably do the same thing and I'll go swim this evening. So my days really revolve around athletics, but a lot of that is because I am training for Tokyo. Not You don't have to go out and ride your bike for two hours or, or run for an hour and then swim for an hour. You know, that's probably very atypical for someone who's not training for a specific event. But um, I mean, I love it. I, I enjoy it and um, I hope I can do it as long as, as long as I, for a long time. <laughs> I'll be honest. I ride my bike for like 30 minutes and my butt starts to hurt. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta, get, the, you gotta get the right seat. Yeah. Is that, is that the yeah. trick? Yeah. And like the more that you do it, um, the better, the better it is. <laughs> Keep going, chief. Keep yep. going. Don't give it up. Keep pedaling. <laughs> I got to go invest in a seat now. That's what I learned today. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, that's excellent advice. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and you know, eating well goes hand in hand with staying fit. So can you share what do your meals look like? And then do you have any advice for our viewers? I will be the first to tell you that no one should follow my nutrition plan. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, you know, nutrition has always been hard for me. I have a huge sweet tooth. Um, you know, I have two young kids. There's dessert in the house. And um, I am the first one to go to that dessert drawer every, every night after dinner and say, what does everybody want? So I think what I've learned is that you have to keep it in moderation. I think if you like I have a huge sweet tooth. And if you give it up completely, you crave it more. So more just being conscious about how much you're eating and, and, and eating it in moderation. But with training, I mean, obviously, you know, you try to get veggies in, um, protein, carbohydrates, and kind of have that balanced meal on your plate, whether it's protein and veggies and a fruit, um, you know, salad or chicken, whatever it may be, or I like to start my days off with good breakfast. So, you know, I typically have eggs, toast, avocado to kind of start my mornings off. Um, so yeah, I, I would say nutrition is probably the hardest, the hardest 
piece for me. But I do notice that when I do eat better, I train better athletically, I feel better. So trying to keep to that, um, especially now and while we're at home a little bit more has been a little bit more challenging, but it, it's, it's, it's working. We're getting there. You're, you're so right about eating better and then feeling better. I notice when I eat better, I, I feel better. And I also have a huge sweet tooth. So I feel you there. Um, I need a dessert drawer to, though. That's a great idea. Why don't yeah. I have that? I mean, it's good and bad because then that's where just where all the candy is. I, I, um, like if I go to the store and, you know, buy dessert or candy, I have to keep it like way back in the trunk. So I'm not, you know, eating it on my way. So. <laughs> I totally understand. Yeah. So you've been hurt. You've been helping, um, nurses and other frontline workers in Colorado Springs, which is where you are, I believe, um, during the pandemic. So can you talk a little bit about snacks for superheroes? Yes. Yeah, so snack for superheroes. So I think when the pandemic all started, we all, you know, you kind of woke up in the morning, what you wanted to do something, right? Like you wanted to give back, you wanted to feel like you were making a difference. And, you know, I woke up in my bed every morning, just, I, I'm always grateful for my life and what I have, but just, you know, a little bit extra grateful for the roof over my head, the meals on the table, living in a safe home, and just feeling really grateful for those workers who were going out and putting their health on the line. So I saw this group out of New Jersey. They were called the Frontline, Frontline Appreciation Group. And they were raising money to donate meals to a hospital. And I thought, well, this is pretty genius. I mean, how um, like they're giving back and helping provide meals. So I reached out to our local hospital. And at the time, they said that they were kind of inundated with meals, which is a great problem to have. Like they were kind of had all these meals um, but the woman, my contact said, but what about snacks? What about something where these doctors and nurses on the front lines can like grab in the middle of their shift, you know, before their shift, after their shift. So I started to, you know, do some fundraising. And one of my friends early on said, um, you know, made a donation. It said snacks for superheroes. I said, well, that's a genius name. <laughs> and it kind of caught on. So um, it's actually, I, I, I am done now, but for, I did it for eight weeks. Um, every Tuesday, I would make a big Costco run. Wednesday, I would deliver it to my offsite hospital contact. You know, through thanks to the public, we raised over $4,000 um, in snacks that we delivered. And just the feedback I got was, was pretty overwhelming, just how much it kind of helped someone get through their shift or just that someone else was thinking about them. So, I mean, snacks it's just snacks. Right. But at the same time, I mean, who doesn't like snacks? So <laughs> I love, as we just talked about dessert, I also love snacks. So I think that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's just so thoughtful and just what a kind spirit you have. I love that. I love that story. Oh yeah, God. It was, it was good. It made, me, it made me feel good. Just like, I mean, like I said, it's just snacks, but just having that, so doing something small to try to get back. <laughs> And Melissa, before my next question, I'm going to backtrack and ask, somebody asked a Chris, uh, fitness question. Uh, uh, Chris Ward asked, how big of a mental game is a triathlon? How do you fight through your mind telling you to stop? Triathlon is not for the faint of heart, but at the same time, you know, you ask someone, could you ever do a triathlon? And people are like, oh no, I could never swim, bike and run, but I'm here to tell you that you can do it. And you, a lot of people are scared to even, you know, try it because they scared that they can't do it. But I promise you that if you try it, not only will you finish it, but you will kind of have this new sense of freedom and worth and thinking about the things that you can do. So if you're worried about doing a triathlon, go try one and no pun intended. And, um, you know, you cross that finish line and I, you kind of be a new person. So the mental block, I mean, it's hard. I mean, I'm not going to say it's easy, you know, and the races I do, like I'm trying to win the races. I'm, I, I'm trying to beat my competitors and make certain times. And on that run, you know, it's, you're on the third mile of that run and it's hard and your leg, you know, my leg hurts. I can't breathe well. And how I get through that is, you know, I, I you have to dig deep, but what you find what motivates you. And what motivates me is the fact that I'm out there running um, because I can run. I think too many others in the military, you know, you have given the ultimate sacrifice they have and we can, people continue to do so. And I feel as though I am running um, for them. 
So I take pride in the fact that I wore the uniform, um, other military personnel, all of you out there, you motivate me. And especially when it gets hard, that you guys are the ones that push me to get to that finish line. Oh. Wow, that's great. So let me, uh, th good response, actually. So, you know, you got to push through, go out there and try it, right? Yeah. Don't say you can't do it unless you try it. Try yeah. it first and see where your limits are and then work on those, work yeah. on pushing those limits. Great feedback. So as a wounded warrior, we know you love our nation's war fighters and their families. Our heroes would love to hear some words of inspiration from you, from you during this time. What can you share with them? Uh, you know, this time, uh, none of us ever expected this right now. I think before all this happened, you read up in like a insurance contract about a pandemic and you don't even know what a pandemic is. But here we are, like we are living in it. And, you know, we never thought we'd be working from home, putting a mask on whenever we went outside, social distancing. And it's hard. Um, you know, you think about your life and this is not where you plan on where it is, especially if you're a high school senior or, you know, there's so many different things that there's so many different, um, different situations out there. But I think what we can all learn from this. So what I've learned, you know, after losing a leg is that life, life, so life never goes as planned. And I know that firsthand after losing my leg over in Iraq and there's obstacles that come our way. And I think I, I can tell everybody that, you know, tough times, they, they're hard, but they don't last. And you find people that you want to get through this together and you find people that are part of your team to help you get through it. And we will get through this together and we will hopefully end up a stronger community on the other side. And what I've started to do, which I think is, you know, maybe some of you can, can start doing as well. So at the end of the day, you know, a lot of us lay in bed and we think about our days and we think about everything that's, you know, that's going wrong in the world. And the world is really tough right now. And we think about, you know, the, the, all the negative aspects of it. But while those are good to process and to, you know, keep up to date on the news, I think it's also so important to think about the good things as well. So for every negative thought that you have, think about something during your day that you did that, that you enjoyed, something that makes you happy and find you know, fill your days with things that make you happy. I think that's what we have to do right now. You're like you can't judge what anybody else is doing. We're all getting through it the best that we can. But when you go to bed at night, think about something positive that happened during the day. And hopefully those positive thoughts will start to come first instead of the negative ones. So that's, that's, that's my advice. That's great. Thank you for that, Melissa. I'm sure that it means a lot to folks. Along that same line, um, the exchange has about 33,000 associates serving around the world. Our teammates uh, in the stores, their mission essential and have been throughout the whole COVID-19 pandemic. Our stores, um, restaurants, they've all been open to serve warfighters and their families. Um, also 85% of our workforce are connected to the military in some way. We would love to hear some words of encouragement uh, for them. Do you have anything, words of hope that you can share with our associates? I think first is just thank you. I mean, you know, especially when it comes to the military, when we're going through something like this, as a, as a, the whole world is, your, your mission doesn't stop. Um, you still, you put, still wake up in the morning, you put that uniform on, there might be a mask that goes with it these days, but like your mission doesn't stop. And you, I think as, you know, yes, I served in the military and, and am a veteran, but I think those of those that are not veterans, you haven't served in the military, we still appreciate all of you. I mean, more than ever and everything that you're doing. And I mean, how great that, you know, the exchange, um, you know, that restaurants have remained open to, to serve all of you that just, just to help show you that what you do is still, is still essential. So you know, I think, you know, that camaraderie in the military is stronger than ever. I mean, all of us know that more than more than most. So find people to lean on if you're having a tough day. Um, be that teammate to somebody else. Be that, you know, battle buddy to somebody else if they need it. And keep doing what you guys are doing and we'll we'll get through this together. I love that advice advice about finding someone to to lean on. I think that's 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 terrific advice and 
your words, they, they do matter and they mean a lot to the people who, who work with us um, all over the world. You touched on this a little bit, but can you talk to us about staying resilient? Um, something you've done throughout your life as a soldier, as a wounded warrior, what advice do you have for others facing life altering situations? Um, it, it's hard. So like, I think when we're younger, we have these ideas of what you think your life is going to be like, you know, you're going to, you have this path you're going to be on, you're going to have this job, this many kids left here. And I mean, it never goes that way, ever goes that way. If it does, um, that's impressive. <laughs> so I think, you know, there's these obstacles that come our way, life changes, there's different roads you can take and you have to be resilient through them. And a lot of times, you know, having the heart to persevere through these obstacles that come your way and you do that and you end up even better on the other side without even realizing it. So, you know, I, I, I'll, I talk about this and I think we might talk about it later, but we all have a choice in life on how we deal with things. So something comes our way and, you know, I, I lost a leg and I could have chosen to say, you know, oh, woe is me, I lost a leg. But instead I chose to say, all I lost is one leg. Now let's get back to, to living. So we all have a choice in how we perceive these obstacles that come our way. We all have a choice on which road to take, the uphill road that's a little bit harder, but choosing to persevere through them or the downhill road that's easier to take, it's, but it's the, you, you're, you never accept it, you never move on, but you be resilient through it, you take that uphill road, and I think you realize at the end of the day just how much better off that, that you can be. Hey, Melissa, were you, you know, after you lost your leg, were you, did you catch yourself maybe on that downhill road and had you know, to come back, or were you always positive and, and, and Staying I've around. always been a very positive person, probably annoyingly optimistic to, to many people, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but that really helped when I lost my leg. And, um, you know, I really, so I did a lot of my rehabilitation and learning to walk and wear a prosthetic at Walter Reed Army Medical Center, which at the time in 2004 is where all the wounded soldiers went from Iraq and Afghanistan. So I was at Walter Reed and if I ever felt bad for myself, if I ever found myself, you know, on that downhill path, all I had to do was look around and see other soldiers who were missing two limbs. They had lost their eyesight. They had traumatic brain injuries. And I looked at myself and thought about how lucky I was because it was just one leg. I had all my good, I had three other limbs, my mind, my eyesight. So I really couldn't feel sorry for myself. So it really kind of helped put things in perspective. So I think I'd be, you know, it's, I, I, I was, I lost a leg. Of course, that's difficult, but I was thankful to have be surrounded by people where I could put those things in perspective when I did have those, those bad moments. So Melissa, what's, what's ahead for you? I know you have a autobiography coming out, the power of choice, my journey from wounded warrior to world champion, which comes, I think later this month. Here it is. Oh, can, you, can you tell us a little bit <laughs> about the that. book and also what else you have going on? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so you're correct. So I have a book coming out. It's right here. It can be pre-ordered on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, kind of any major, um, book seller and it's called the power of choice. So kind of just like I talked about the power of choice. Um, it talks about my story, um, and losing a limb over in Iraq and kind of, you know, where I am today, but kind of interweaved in the story are just these messages of, of the power of choice and being positive and how we can really choose to, to live and to be live the life that we want to live. So, so that's exciting. Um, the book is coming out in early July. I, I'm um, still training. So, you know, when I think about the future, Tokyo 2021 is, um, is very much in, in sight. Um, you know, we obviously postponed a year, but that is still the goal. So waking up and still training with hopes of that every day. You know, the future, um, I have two young kids. I have a two-year-old, a five-year-old. So being the best mom I can be, um, I do coach um, some uh, triathletes. My husband and I have a prosthetic company in Colorado Springs where we fit amputees with artificial limbs. So there's a lot of stuff that's going on. It's a busy life, but I don't think I'd have it any other way. It's, it's a good <laughs> life. Awesome. So I want to take a second to share some of the feedback uh, from our Facebook feed. Rulon says, I love that feeling of doing good and giving back. We need more people like you in the world. What a great human. Um, that's kind. Jeremy also says, that's great. When I started running, I used to think after what my grandfather had to do in World War II, this is nothing. 
Mark says, what an inspiration. Um, you have that coming from several people. Larry says, thank you for your service and sacrifice soldier. Um, and Brian says, thanks for sharing your story as well as your awesome words of resiliency. Awesome. Thank you everyone for the kind comments and, um, yeah, tuning in for everything. Awesome. So can you tell us about your foundation called dare to try? Yeah. So Dare to Try, it's Dare to Try Paratriathlon Club. So Dare, the number two, T-R-I. It's a nonprofit that was founded by myself and two others back in Chicago in 2011. And we had the goal to get other or other people with physical disabilities into the sport of triathlon. So really knowing firsthand what how positive sports can be in someone's life, but especially somebody with a disability and wanting to prove to someone who is missing a leg or has a spinal cord injury in a wheelchair or who's visually impaired, they can still get out there, swim, bike, and run. They cross that finish line and they are just, I mean, talk about seeing how much ability is in a disability. It's pretty, it's pretty powerful. So we serve um, youth, adults, injured service members. We have um, grassroots year round programming. We have camps throughout the year. Our motto is one inspires many and you know our athletes inspire both on and off the race course. And it's just truly one of my proudest accomplishments. And um, you can learn more about it at dare, the number two, tri.org and just what we do and who we serve and um, to, to give back if, if you so choose. So yeah, it's, um, it's pretty near and dear to my heart. So besides your foundation and the website you just mentioned, where else can people go to find out more about you and where can we follow you online and on social media? Yep. So I do, you know, I, I do share my journey um, with my two young kids um, through this pandemic on the road to Tokyo on social media. So on Facebook, it's just Melissa Stockwell, USA. And on um, Twitter and Instagram, it's just mstockwell01. So yeah, that'd be great if you guys followed along and um, hopefully maybe, maybe you'll get a little inspired along the way. You're very inspiring. I want to, I want to read your book, just like listening to you. I realize I have a lot of work to do on myself. I can, I need more of your attitude in my life. You're amazing. Uh, it's, thank you. But it's all relative. I mean, I, you know, it, life is all relative something, you know, so yes. So just think about whatever it is in your own life that you want to do, go do it, find what makes you happy. And um, hopefully we can all, you know, make this world a little bit better together. Melissa, Leslie, Leslie Warren says, I met Melissa in Valdez, uh, in Valdez. She hand cycled up Thompson Pass. Oh, she yeah. proves every day that strength comes from within, no matter your physical challenges. Love her. Way to go, Melissa. Oh, Leslie, Valdez, Alaska. That was during the Saddler's Alaska Challenge. Just bike ride all over Alaska. Yeah, that was, that was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. really hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does sound hard. <laughs> Melissa, so thanks again for spending time with us today. We appreciate your service and your incredible sacrifices. Best of luck to you as you continue training for the 2021 Paralympics. It's been an honor having you with us today. We truly appreciate you spending time with the family. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you for having me. Thanks again. Thanks for, to all of you out there for all you do. Um, thanks to PNG for making this possible. And just, yeah, thank you. Thanks to the exchange. And yeah, we'll get through We'll get through this together. <laughs> you mind staying on for a minute after we finish yeah. here? All right. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Melissa. Melissa. So yeah. great to meet you. I'm going to yeah. stop the stream. Thanks. <laughs>